In part seven, we will open a groove for the hinge, as well as the little knuckles, the little tubing. Please do so on the side where you had drilled the hole, so you still see a little bit of the hole left. So first prepare this area by filing this time all the way down to the wall, but only on the side where we're working. So only on the side where there's a hole, prepare the surface so it's perfectly filed down to the side wall. No emery, just filing nice and straight without rocking side to side. However, do follow the curvature of the locket. Do not file all the way around, only on that section. Using a triangle needle file, cut two or cut four, start filing into the groove. The point of the triangle file is opening that groove slightly. This must be done very straight, not following the curvature of the locket. Very straight, up and down, on the side of the locket. Do not rock forward and back. Lock your wrist and file straight. This is very important if you want the hinge to function properly. We are then going to switch to the square needle file. Cut two or cut four as well. Same thing, really straight back and forth, following the groove we've made, just going deeper and the square needle file using the point of one of the corner will open up the groove a little bit wider. So again, take your time. This will take a little bit of time to open. And again, we don't rock. Straight only. Switching to a round parallel needle file. You may have found one that's small enough at the hardware store. If not, please borrow one of ours or use your own tapered needle file, but only the tip of it. Do not open wider than your tubing that's going to be soldered there. Our tubing is 1.8 for most of us. So the needle file cannot be wider than 1.8, so that's quite small. So you can borrow one of our parallel file to continue the groove up and down. This will again take quite a bit of time to go all the way. We want to go halfway to two thirds deep until our tubing fits halfway to two thirds deep. Very straight, do not rock. Again, do not rock side to side, do not rock forward and back. Really, really straight, lock your wrist, go much slower than this. The video is sped up, take your time. Once your tubing fits halfway to two thirds deep, you're done, it's time to stop. When you reopen your locket, you will see that uh, on the side wall, part of it is starting to disintegrate because we've filed there. That's perfectly normal, no need to panic there. The uh, two ends of the hinge will be soldered on the sides and we will solder the middle tube onto the bottom section where we had the bezel so there's more wall there. Please take your calipers and measure the length of the opening we just created. Mine is uh, 17. Yours may change quite a bit if you have made a small round locket. So measure 
the length and adjust the following accordingly to your measurements. My length is 17. I will divide this by 2 and that gives me 8.5. That's my center knuckle of my hinge. That's my center piece. We will then take the remaining 8.5 and divide this again by 2. For me, that gives me 4.5. Again, your measurements will be slightly different. 4.5 will be the measurements of the end knuckle, so the top and bottom, not the center. To that, we need to add one millimeter only to the two end knuckles. That gives me 5.25 millimeters. So again, your total width divided by two is your center knuckle. The remaining number divided by two again is the end knuckles, but you add one millimeter to each. So that gives you your measurement for your hinge. A three-part hinge is not divided in three. It's divided in four with the center piece twice the length of the two ends. Filing your tubing perfectly straight at the end to start, making sure using your set square that it is perfect. If you want to use a miter vise, if you have one, that's fine. Or if you want to borrow one, that's fine. Or you can practice filing perfectly straight by rotating your tube. Once the end is perfect, you will go get your measurement of your center tube. I'm doing the center tube first. So for me, that's 8.5. I will set that on my calipers and I will go and pick that with my dividers. Very precisely 8.5 millimeter exactly for my center knuckle. So again, making sure the end of my tube is perfect. I will take my calipers at the right measurement and I will go and mark my tubing all the way around. Make sure your dividers are nice and sharp and in good shape. The points arriving together when they're closed. If they are not, come to me. I will help you adjust them. I will now cut on the outside of the line. I'm not gonna cut on the line, that'll be too short. I'm gonna cut on the outside of the line. You know yourself if you file a lot after cutting, if you cut a little bit crooked, give yourself a little extra. When we cut tubing, we cut all the way around. We do not start on one end and continue through that would not arrive correctly on the other end. We put our saw and we go all the way around and keep rotating until we're done. Again, filing this to our line exactly, perfectly well. Again, use a miter vise if you want, or get used to filing tubing, rotating, rotating until it's perfect on your set square. Notice that I am using a flat hand file, not a needle file. And this is to make sure that it's perfectly straight. It's much easier to control. Double check on your set square to make sure it's perfect. And then you can test it out on your bottom piece of your locket. It is now time to cut the two outer knuckles. So the ones that we've added a millimeter. So for me, that is 5.25 and you need two of those shorter knuckles. Same process, go find your measurement with your calipers and then you take your dividers, your perfectly sharp dividers and you go pick that number onto it. The top here will be the same as well as the bottom. It's just a little bit harder to be accurate picking at the top and the bottom. And again, filing the leftover bit of tubing perfectly square, marking, cutting, filing, 
you have extra tubing so feel free to practice a few if it's not happening first keep going you'll eventually get there rotate the tube to have a perfect end and you need two of those pieces I'm adding a little bit of black Sharpie, black permanent marker, and this will help in our soldering uh, process in the next video.